Spice from Detroit, ghetto rock star. I'm out here fucking with Grand Media out here in Atlanta, Georgia. But you know we about to turn the city upside down. Y'all gotta go tap in with me. You know we about to do a part two too. So don't think this it. This ain't it. It's coming. It's coming. About the uh, skyline. Yeah, we have a little studio right now. You said what? We have a little studio right there. Oh, what? Okay. Long time ago. Long, long, long time ago. He's about 15 years ago. Yeah. What's up, world? It's another episode of Grind Media TV. And right about now, I'm back trying to do another interview. And today, I got the lovely... Isis, the goddess, baby. <laughs> and for y'all people that's out there, you want to tell them where you're from? I'm from Detroit, baby. Detroit, Michigan. Murder me. So, Detroit, Michigan. So, what's Detroit like? Shit. It's raw. It's raw. What you see is what you get. You feel me? Exactly. Detroit raw is fucked. Like, for real, because the people... Dope ass people, talented ass people. We gotta get it together though, you know, <laughs> come together. That's the only thing we missing. But we gonna do that. We gonna do that. Okay. Beautiful too. So, so with that being said, um, what got you into the music and what make you wanna be an artist? Music was like therapy to me, you know. Um, just a way for me to express myself. And when I was younger, I was about like 12 years old, I used to freestyle a lot. You know, just sitting with my aunties and my friends, freestyling. And then when I got older, I was 16, I got a studio for the first time. And somebody told me I should get serious. They're like, you should really do, you should really do this. You sound good. Now, I'm gonna put it to the test. Now, do you remember your very, very first freestyle that you just really, I ain't gonna say your very first one, but the one that you took serious, that you just kick all the time, or? Are you talking about the first one? Nah, I wouldn't say the first one. Okay, good. One of the early ones. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, I was like, you want me to say? <laughs> I, I would love to hear it. At least part of it. Yeah, you know, look. So, the very first, first um, Life is a bitch and that hoe wear makeup. I keep it 100, so I like my vodka straight up. Everybody wanted a piece of pie, but I keep my cake up. Money say tomato, I catch a mess, be on your way up. Uh, <laughs> this not, I ain't gonna lie, this was the, the very first one. I was about 16 years old, you know? 16. Yeah, I was about 16. So she started out early. Wow. Yeah. At a real yeah, young yeah, age. Yeah. Um, so what role do Detroit play in your music? Like, when you actually, like, what role do you play when you're writing? Like, oh, well, Detroit give me my whole expression because it's my life. Like, if I, if I could put my life in one word, it would be Detroit. You feel me? Um, I'm born, originated there, raised. East side of the trade. So, you know, big east side and it's big. <laughs> but um yeah, Detroit play a big role for real. Um, I mean in my music career, it really do. Um, it molded me, it, it, it created this character, this person, this persona that's in front of y'all right now. Now how would you describe that persona? Get a raw, get a rock star, um, energy. If I could put it in one word, it'd be energy, but mm -hmm. energy, I bring that energy. I don't just do that boring shit. Everybody be doing much trying to look cute. I don't give a fuck about looking cute. I'm already cute. I'm beautiful. So, you I, know. I can vouch for that. But um, with that being said, like, I had the pleasure of catching her at one of the people out the event. Now, you want to tell the people how did, how did that come about? Um, the coalition event. Okay, not the coalition DJ. Oh, the, um, 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 what's her name? Cosmopolitan, P. Brown. P. Brown. Yeah. P. Brown, yeah, it was the P. Brown show. Um, you know what? I was in town, I saw the, um, the flyer, something popped up, and, um, so I had hit them up, the people who was in charge of the event, about getting on, but then, so happily, because I have some connections out here, yeah. um, a DJ Decepticon. He's part of the Home Coalition Atlanta. Yes. Um, DJ Decepticon, he was like, oh, you want to perform? You can have my slot. I guess they was giving every DJ a, a artist yes. to bring or present. And he presented me. Yes. And, and I got on. She did a great job. I mean, that's what really stood out to me and kind of led up to this interview. You know, I, um, 
What song did you get? What you get? Three songs? Last day here. I did, I did two. Two. I did, okay. um, I did fake two and last day here. I believe. Um, and I ain't gonna lie, that that last day here is probably like the females that was in the front of the um the stage. Yeah. It's like I felt them feeling it while I was performing. <laughs> It's like some of them look like they was, they was crying, like because yeah. that song kind of deep. It's a it's a deep song, um, a exactly. very deep meaningful song. So with that being said, um, let's talk about that song then. What what is so deep and meaningful about it? Last day here, and when I when I spelled the here, it's H E um, A R like here. Okay. Um, it's not 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 here, you know. Um, it's so deep because I'm talking about the challenges that the women go through nowadays. You know, I'm trying to be the best for the women low key, like high key. Um, they need that. They need they need someone to say, hey baby girl, it's okay. I, I went through this too. This happened to me too. Yeah, a nigga tried to make me change. It ain't even work. He caught himself jumping on me. It ain't even hurt. Like nigga, you know, nigga, for some reason, some males think that it's okay to put their hands on females. Some women believe it's okay to like look down or talk down on the female that's already below them. Like, you make more money than me. You doing more than me. Why you don't like me? Why you? You just want to pull me up there with you. Yeah, let's fix my crown. Yeah. Hopefully we can fix that in our people. You know, anybody out there that listening to that part, you know, try to figure out how we can fix that. Um, now, bringing that up, to, um, let's talk about that topic matter. Now, being a female in the music game, what is the hardest thing you deal with? You want the truth? I want the raw truth. <laughs> okay, on some, on some real shit, the hardest thing that I have encountered in the music industry so far have been the males, the sex, the, you know, Whenever it come down to someone want to work with you and they might find you attractive, the sad truth is if you turn them down, you might never get to work with that person. And that's sad. <laughs> because it ain't like I'm saying, hey, I want you to work with me for, work with me for free. Yeah. No, man. They still, the man, put your feelings to the side. I actually, in a nutshell, I'm going to tell you the story. It's a local artist in Detroit that got a, a nice name for himself. I'm not gonna say it, but um, he's he's a good example for this because in the line of Super Bowl, I declined him for some cooch. Um, four or five months later, I, I was opening up one of his shows. He completely denied me access to perform. I had about 16 people there. He was from out of town. Everybody paid 16 to get in. And, um, when it was time for me to perform, I heard him out, the, out, my, out my ear like, no. Like, talk to the DJ. At the end of the day, I did not perform. And I know why. Um, you most definitely got to do better in those situations. I mean, um, the music industry, there's no room for personal feelings. I no, mean, you got to kind of um, let us stuff go and get back to work. You know, treat it like you. Treat it like you would treat working for the white man in one of these corporate jobs. Put them to the side and get to work. Yes, yes. <laughs> and stuff, bro. Um, I can't even lie, cause I mean, outside of that though, outside of sex and all that, um, the image, you know, what everyone expects us to look like. Everybody needs a BBL. Everyone gotta have big booty, big titties, flat stomach. You know, that's what is. I believe that's hard in the, um, for the females in the industry right now because they're battling with themselves. They're depressed because they don't look up to par. They're not shaped like this or that. You know, um, the hair, the makeup, they want you to do all the full fledged. You know, I think that, you know, because there's some talented women out here. That's not even getting to the light because it, it might not be today's society of what they want us to look like. That's another thing, but yeah. So, I mean, with that being said, how do you balance? Because, like you said, they want women to portray a certain image, and one image is you got to be able to sell a sex image. So how do you balance that out? Well, I'm I'm a sex icon regardless. You know, I, I mean, you know, I, sex is natural. I have nothing against sex. Sex is natural. 
don't don't force it though you know it's natural it gotta happen naturally so um for real i just i just be me myself um I'm a, like i said i'm already a sexual being i like talking freaky uh you know i like i like putting on that persona anyway but um you know i, I used to be a bigger girl i used to be um shit like 260 270 big as hell, you know, by me being short, you know, I carried it, you know, thick. yeah, I was real short, thick with it, but, um, so, I naturally lost the weight, you know, um, just by wanting to change my lifestyle, you know, stop eating meat, exercising every day, um, smoothies most of the time, all that good stuff, so, I just, I just, I just want to better myself, and it ain't got nothing to do with music, I want to better myself. We living in that time now where uh, health is wealth and we gotta make sure what we eat and um, pay attention to some of the stuff that we're putting into our bodies. Yes. Um, yes. So since you've been down here, what are some of the events that you didn't um, attend? Um, well, you, yeah. Well, I know you said the Coalition DJs. How yeah. was that? Oh, that was dope. That was dope as fuck. Like, it was big networking opportunity there. Like, everybody was looking like, hold on, who's shit? It's like, it seems like when you're in Atlanta, you got a chain, and you, you know, you up to par, like, they like, who is she, who is she, she gotta be somebody. So it was good networking, you know, um, don't ever be shy if you ever see me out of public. I'm, I'm, I'm not no bougie character, I'm not none of that, you know, you can approach me. And I love when people come up to me and start asking me about what I do or my social media or whatever, you know, and want to get to know me, big guys, you know, so um, that, that, that event was dope. So who was like, was there anybody big in particular that just stood out that you had a chance to shake hands with or? Oh yeah, um, Waka Flocka. <laughs> uh, Waka Flocka, Waka. Um, Waka was dope. Dope ass personality. Humble, humble ass man. He is very humble because it got to a point where I was just standing there next to him like, you look, because everybody trying to get, you know, take pictures with him. But me and was talking and they like, hey, hey, Waka, Waka. I'm like, I'm like. You get tired of this a little bit, don't you? He's like, no, I'm just, he just come with it. He a Gemini too. I'm a Gemini. So, shout out to all the Jimmies out there. So, it's just like, I fuck with you. We, we here, we here, I fuck with you. Uh, so, he was definitely one of them. I saw Deb, his mother. Uh, I saw Rick Ross. Um, shook hands with a lot of people there. Now, what is the funny thing about networking and shaking hands? Do you, do you like doing it or? I like meeting new people because you get to see people different walks of life, you know, because we be so stuck in our own bubble a lot to where we, we forget that everybody don't think like us, everybody don't walk like us, everybody, you know, go about different ways. So um, networking is a good, you know, it's a good thing to talk to people. Since I'm from Detroit, we ain't really friendly, but, you know, <laughs> got to put on that mask, that hat. Different. And hopefully we can change that in the black community, man. Um, get back to the point to where we can kind of help each other and not look at each other like, man, I wonder what they finna do shady to me this time. <laughs> you know, it's sad that we got to look at our people like that. But um, back to your music, like, what's, what are you pushing a new project? Are you pushing an old project? Are you pushing anything new that you're going to drop? Or, you know? Well, right now, I... I'm really pushing my top single, same. Um, it should be the same for a bitch. And that's for my ladies. But I ain't gonna lie to you. The dudes been rocking with it. They been rocking with it because they got rebuttals. What they want to say, like, oh, oh, you saying this? Well, let me say this. You know, so. Um, same is right now. It's at um, 121K um, views, streams on YouTube. Jerry Production shot the video. You know, um, a lot of people know Jerry. He shoot with um, Lil Baby, Dirk, and all them. Pretty shiesty, all them, yeah. So, um, Jerry is from Detroit. A young, well, he was like 24, I think, or 22. Like, he young, out here getting it. So, to oh, it was so dope to work with him. It was so dope to work with him. So, shout out to him. But, yes, and, um, so, same is my top song. But, really, it's like, I ain't focused on just one song. And I don't, like, I only dropped one project so far. It's called Five Three with a Mug because I'm five three. I'm short, and um, I started the masses before Corona back in 2018. 
So I had everybody in Detroit and out of state because I was shipping to, to where I was making almost a thousand dollars a day with the mask until coronavirus. Fuck you, because you killed my business. <laughs> but until coronavirus came, but like I had the masses with, you know, whatever you wanted on it, I glitter it out, stone it out, whatever. It could be your business. I had a lot of construction workers, nail techs, all that buying the wrappers. Everybody buying my masses. Um, so um, five three with a mug came out um, a couple years ago. Now it's been officially two years, I believe. So that's my only project I dropped. I really don't. I feel like I'm 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 presenting myself. So I don't believe when artists are this fresh that they should just throw out a project. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think single it, single it until you get that pop to somebody actually start listening. So they, you know, they really start listening. I have a lot of fans, but a project I could just single it out for me until I feel like I'm a, you know, to that. That make a lot of sense. You know, that, that's what I would advise. Um, now, the thing that just stood out that probably a lot of people didn't fully pay attention to was the fact that. She said she had a business idea way before she started to do she started to do the music. Now, how big are you on your entrepreneurship? Like, what do you like? Do you see yourself as just being an artist, or like, what is your final goal in the game? Like, what do you? Honestly, me being an artist is me to make my step and to get my platform. Um, I love performing. There's something about performing. It's like something take over me, and I'm something about performing to me but I love doing music I love expressing myself I love you know being relatable and um and helping other females people women people overall um through my music I love that but also real shit is like I just I just want to make my step in the world I want to leave I want to leave something here when I'm gone and um if if later on I'm not doing music you know what I'm gonna do I didn't make all this connection since I was doing music so now I got people that, oh, that's ISIS. I fuck with her. Remember back in 2020? Remember back in 2019? Remember back in 2021? Oh, that's her. She, yeah, yeah. And to where if I start managing artists later, if I start doing movies, if I start, I might, I have these people that I done made connections with and I done network with organically. Not on no, you know, just, oh, oh, you work with such and such, so I'm going to just act like I like you and just be friendly to you. No. I'm really raw. When I, if I ever gave you the, um, a good impression that I fuck with you, it's, it's raw. It's real. You know, so it's just about just getting the platform. So maybe one day I can have that platform and start talking to my people and to where it's no more music. Now everybody know who I am and they want to see what I'm, what I'm about to do next. And they want to hear what I'm about to say and know what's the next thing to do because I'm gonna be telling them how to get their skin good, how to keep their pussy clap tight, how to, all that good shit. Like, I'm the person that's gonna be doing it. It's called Goddess Shit. And I'm giving good advice, how to repair your credit, all that, all lifestyle hacks. Yeah. And, I, and I stumped that situation right there to the fullest because there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of beautiful, talented young ladies out there, but they do really need some type of mentorship yes. in the same way that young men need mentorship. So, um, that being said, y'all make sure y'all stay updated on what she just mentioned in that aspect. Um, so much to talk about. I know, um, right? <laughs> I had the pleasure of seeing you in the studio networking with um, Kodak. How did that come about? Helliver uh, from Detroit. Um, a lot of people know Helliver. He um, he worked with Mega Style. He did Kodak Black um, Versatile. Where that song was long as hell, he kept rotating the beat and kept going. Um, he did um, he did a lot of songs, you know, with a lot of artists. So he worked with Short, Short, Shoreline Mafia, um, big with Detroit. He's all about Detroit. So I met Hell of a about three years ago when I first started out, and he actually took me serious, and he gave me a chance, and I really respected that because you know T Grizzly had first day out. Um, so when T Grizzly came on first day out. That blue hell of a name to the sky, you know. So um, I initially always wanted to work with him when I first started rapping. So I, I got in with him. Here we go. Two years later, Kodak coming to the studio. He like, hey Ice, what you doing? I'm like, shit. I'm like, what's up? He like, you want to pull up? Cause he know I love Kodak. Like I love Kodak. <laughs> like it, it's a it's a mindset thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a mindset thing, the fact I love him. Um, he a Gemini as well. And I think that's got a big impact on why I love him. Because I feel like we be on the same mental level. So, um, you ever hear me up? Say, pull up. Shit, Cody ain't about to come. I'm like, you lying. I pulled up quick as hell. Okay, so, so with that being said, then what are your top three artists of all time? What is it about each one of them that, that, that you like? I was in love with Lil Wayne for some reason. I don't know. Look, I was so in love with that man. I have pictures of him all over my wall. Um, and it's wordplay. It's wordplay. And I ain't gonna lie. It's just something about, the, like, you know, the way you, you talk, the way you just come off the top of your head and your mind. See, I feel like rap can be science because they say our brain chemical, right? So, um, if you just talk, going off the top of your dome, anything that's coming out your head is, is science, scientifically coming out your mouth somehow. Because whatever's working and, and tick tocking up there and rotating, it, it's, come, it's coming out the way it's supposed to. Or it's just, it's you. It's organic. So Lil Wayne would be because of how his wordplay, the way, you know, it's going to be very lyrical. Um, Missy Elliott, why not? You know, she made her step like a motherfucker. She did that. Like, when you thought of females back then, Music industry, you thought her, you know, um, bigger than just being a, a rapper, yes. Oh, bigger than just doing music, yeah. she didn't, she, she, you know, she didn't pave the way, she didn't, she didn't open doors for people, she didn't get people opportunities, she didn't do other stuff outside of music, you know. Shout out to her, um, and then, um, Eminem, of course, you know, he was trailer park trash in Detroit, hey, mom, you feel me, he's from where I'm from, you know, Detroit, so, um, just to see him. Go from nothing to something. Lyrical as fuck too. Very lyrical. Um, freestyle game off, off top, top one. Can't nobody fuck with him when it comes to freestyling and just go talk. I wish you. He nasty with it. He nasty as fuck with it. <laughs> and one thing I can say, I wish you just come, come fuck with the city a little more. You know, Detroit. You Detroit. You see the talent. Sign a couple artists. I don't know. Do something. That's the only thing I say about him, but. Yes, shout out to Eminem. So, with that being said, um, how do you feel about so much like um, police violence and well, what's going on with the police in the community? How do you feel about a lot of that stuff? That shit hurt. It hurt because you know we supposed to look at them to protect, serve, to, you know, be there for us when we need them. But instead, we hate them or we fear them. Or, that shit ain't right. And. What they need to realize is that they just pawns, baby boy. You're just a pawn. You don't matter to the government, for real. You're just security for the government. So you hold that badge and you hold it too high. You, the police need to humble themselves because they're doing all this when we pay their checks. We pay them to, to kill us, to beat us. Definitely. I can go on about as, that. As a young black man, I'm going to tell you like this. If it ain't that serious for you to run, don't run. And if you know you ain't no track star, just, just, just take the charge. And, 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 you, you know, just... <laughs> but right yeah. now, trying to run, you know, they, they some of them are shooting and it's not yeah. working. So. And, um, I've, been, I've been fighting cases for a long time, man. Like, a lot of people see me, they're just like, oh, she's just pretty good. No, baby. I mean, I am, but I've been through some shit. Shit didn't happen where I had to do some shit where I didn't did. You know, every case I done took the trial, especially every felony, because I've been about four felonies in that courtroom on trial. I beat them. I beat every single one. Never took a plea deal. And it's just because the system fucked up. Because they'll say you did this, they'll label it as this charge. Yeah. And no. No, because it's a backstory to what the fuck really happened. But they don't give a fuck. So I always, I, I, don't, I don't settle. If I don't win, I don't win. But I'm not about to settle. I'm not about to settle. I'm about to let the system get me down. I want good credit and I want a clean record. And I want to make sure my kids, my family good. You feel me? So I'm not going to settle. I'm going to take that chance. I got to sit down and sit down. So, so let me ask you, leading up to the day of the verdict, what is the thought running through your head? 
I'm a Gemini, so I battle myself. One part of me like, you got this, fuck the people. But then the other part like, damn, if the jury looking at you like, oh, she's just this black girl from Detroit. Or, you know, it's all about what what, what the people gonna think. So when it boils down to it, it's like, I'm ready for war. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just really like a, like a head butter. I don't give a fuck a lot. Which I need to change, so I need to work on that. And a lot of us black people need to work on that and think first. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, nah, for real, because the history. I, I, I could have lost. I could have lost. I, I've been a child three times. One of them got dismissed before, um, without us even starting the trial, but it was that trial. You know, the other ones actually went through. So it's like, you know, you're taking a chance. Yeah, good feeling. Chance. Definitely ain't no good feeling. Your yeah, life is somebody um, else's. Public defender or paid lawyer? You know what's crazy? Uh, what's crazy is that my top two cases that I beat in trial was a public defender. But this one woman, my first time ever catching a felony charge, um, this one woman, she was a white woman, um, Suzanne, shout out to her, I forget her last name. She was really ready. Like, like she was ready. She was like, she was like, oh no, you wanna go to trial? You wanna go to trial? I don't care. I got you. I love trial. She said, when she said those words, she loved going to trial. It's like, it's like it was a passion to her. She was the older one. She can't really hear. That's, that kind of pissed me off because she kept saying, what did you say during the, during the proceedings in court? But she was ready and I, I will hire her. You feel me? I will hire her. But at those times when I was going through it, I didn't have it, you know, and then I probably bonded myself out for the 2000 or the 1500 you know, for the 10%. So it's like that was that was my um you know that was my um my um whatever they call it holding fee whatever you call it we're retaining fee so it's like nope I'm like fuck it I can't do it I can't do it so but they did they shit um not just her it was another one um uh, he did his damn thing he was a black man he did his thing and it, I can't even lie it was another one. it was a white man from Macomb County he did his thing too public defenders. I did not pay them, but I ain't gonna lie, I tipped them. I was like, I don't know if you take this money, but here, threw it in their pocket, like a few hundred. Cause you know, yeah. cause y'all did y'all thing. And with that being said, like, um, they need motivation to uh, a little bit of help to uh, remind them that, look, you got somebody to life you playing with, so make sure you take it serious and, you well, know. Oh, I'd fire somebody for a second. I know we've been talking for a minute and it's been, I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a hot little minute. Is there any advice you got for um, an up and coming artist or any artist out there that's. I'm gonna just say, you know, stay true to yourself. Um, go all in. Don't, don't play with it. Because me first starting off, if I would have went harder and took it more, more serious and was more consistent. I would have probably been way further than that. I, I would have been way further than that. So be specific. What is one mistake that you felt like you could have, that you made that you felt like you could have did better? Being too nice, if you, if you really want to go there. Just being too nice, trusting some people. Um, when you say trust, you mean like, in, in what way? Like you trusted them to book an appointment but they didn't book the appointment or you trust them to pass out flyers but they threw the flyers in the trash can or... I trusted them by allowing them in my life period uh, giving them access to me and, and one thing I just noticed that I am a healer I'm a vibe you know I'm a glitch in the matrix you feel me um, I'm going to show you something different so when you with me, you get motivated. You you know, I, I'm spicing something up in your life that you was missing. And I attract damaged people. So that's why I say I'm a healer because when they leave, yeah, they leave at the wrong time for me, but they leave at the right time for them. Because they done soaking up my energy. So that's what I'm saying. It left me tired, you know. It left me tired. It left me like, oh, maybe I need to just say fuck this shit. Oh, maybe I'm not going to go to that event. Maybe I'm not. I probably missed out on some shit. I have to say. Most definitely training. 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 Um, For sure. 
So with that being said, like, how do you deal with that coming in contact with so many different spirits and and having to deal with that situation? Um, if if you catch their demons, you feel me? You gotta like you gotta focus on yourself. You know, take some time out for yourself. Go get cute. Go get a haircut. Whatever you gotta do. Um, do something to make you happy.